In this episode, I'm going over my process for getting 100% free Mixamo animations into UE5 and mapped to our UE5 mannequin right here. Way to go, Manny. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And the first thing I want to mention is something that honestly I haven't used, but I've heard that it works well. And if you're making a first person shooter game, this is exactly what I would use. Epic Games has a free animation starter pack. It's got a bunch of animations, looks like it's about a dozen, but it looks like mainly they revolve around first person shooters. Because I'm not doing that, because I'm doing more of a spell casting magic centric game, we got to go elsewhere. And the problem is all the other packs, they cost money. So where do we go? So the number one place I've found for free animation content is Mixamo. It's got a ton. You will have to create an account to get access to Mixamo, but it's entirely free. And if you search by keywords, so for example, if I search for spell here, yeah, there's just an absolute ton of animations. But there is a problem because these animations are not specifically designed for Unreal Engine, especially not the new Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. So the question then is, how do we get them into Unreal Engine, but how do we actually map them to the new UE5 mannequin? So for this process, I use a free program from Terrabilis Studio, and it's called Mixamo Converter 2.0. And it's very easy to get. You'll find a link to it in the description below. You go to that link, you do a direct download. And also note here that the unzip password is Terrabilis all lowercase because you'll need that when you unzip the files and if you can give these guys a donation i'm sure they would greatly appreciate it so once you download that you can just open it up and i just drag the folder onto my desktop you will need to put in that password so this is where it's terribilis all lowercase and now we got the folder so i'm going to go ahead and open that and i open up the program here i go to more info i say run anyway and once you click through the first few screens, then you'll see this. In step one, it says upload. So we need to take our modified skeleton, which we can find in the mannequins folder here, and we need to upload this to Mixamo. So if I go back to Mixamo, and I'm just gonna upload a character here in the top right, and then we can drag in the SK mannequin for Mixamo right here. Just take a few seconds to upload. And then once you do that, it's got your character, it shows it all animated, you are good to go. And that's how you're seeing me having this character here. And then from that point forward, you could just select any of these animations and it is mapped to that character. But you'll notice that this is the original UE4 mannequin. And so when we bring this into UE5, we're gonna have to transition it from the UE4 mannequin into the UE5 mannequin. Now you can bring in any animation you want at this step, but just for fun, I'm gonna stick with what I did on the intro. So robot, hip hop, dance, and this is the dance that I was doing. And often when you download these animations from Mixamo, you get some settings that you can manipulate. So the focus, you can change that. It's just gonna update the animation a little bit. Normally I don't mess with it, but you can also trim it so that the animation isn't quite as long. So if I just need a segment of an animation, I often do that. So I'll trim it in some portion of the animation. Overdrive is basically the speed of the animation. I can make them go like much faster. Yeah, that doesn't look natural. In the character arm space, that's self-explanatory. We can raise that out a little bit. I'll put that back to normal. Mirror just flips the animation. So the left arm becomes the right, right arm becomes the left. All right, so now if we're ready to get our animation, we just go to download. And I always choose here without skin and then keyframe reduction I set to uniform. Frames per second, I keep that at 30 and then download. So now that's part of our downloads folder. So I can open that up. We got a robot hip hop dance. So now back in our Mixamo converter folder, I got to go back to that and then the incoming FBX. I basically got to take that robot hip hop dance, drag that into the incoming and then we have to convert here. So I click on convert and then this crazy fast running gal, click convert check mark is checked and then we are good to go. At this point, you can exit out of this. So then we can go back to our Mixmo converter folder, outgoing FPX and it's converted now. We have our new animation. But you see here it's for UE4. It's designed specifically for the UE4 mannequin. But luckily, once we bring this into UE5, there's a really quick way to convert it. So at this point, I'm gonna boot up my Unreal Engine project and we'll go from there. All right, so in our content folder, we need to figure out where we're going to put these new animations. So I'm gonna navigate under characters and then mannequin UE4, because at first they're going to be specifically for UE4 and then in animations. And from there, I can take a robot hip hop dance, drag it right in. And when we do that the first time, we get this FBX import options prompt. And the first thing I have to do is I have to choose the appropriate skeleton. So if I come down here, always, always make sure to select the UE4 mannequin skeleton. You have to import this to the UE4 skeleton before we can convert it. Now there's a few other settings we need to adjust here. So if you expand under animation advanced, make sure import meshes and bone hierarchy is checked. And then for this use default sample rate, make sure to check that. For this import custom attributes, uncheck that. For import bone tracks, keep that checked. 
and then this delete existing morph targets, keep that unchecked. And for this do not import curves with only zero values, uncheck that. The last thing I do, because I noticed this for basically all animations, that they tend to cause the character to float a little bit above the ground in UE5. And so for the import translation here, I have to set the Z to negative three. So that just lowers the animation about three units, three centimeters down to the ground. And once I've got all this looking good, I just say import. If we go back to our content drawer, we now have our robot hip hop dance with a UE4 mannequin. But the problem is this is the old UE4 mannequin. How do we get this working with the new mannequin? And luckily UE5 gives us tools to do it. So if you close out of this, and you navigate back to your content drawer, we have to go to the mannequin UE4 folder, and we have to go into rigs here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go into the IK UE4 mannequin rig. For the preview mesh here, we need this to recalculate all the animations that have now been brought in for this particular rig. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out the preview mesh, and then I'm gonna select it again, the second SK mannequin, and then save that. And that'll recalculate all the animations. And at that point, we can go back to our content drawer, and if we come into our UE5 Manny right here, IK Retargeter, you should now see all the animations here that you brought in. So I just have my robot hip hop dance. And if you don't see your animation here, you just need to do that step I did earlier. So you gotta go back here, you gotta clear this out, put it back in, make sure to hit save. So now, how do we bring it over to our UE5 character here? So we select the animation that we wanna bring over and we could select multiple. I'm just gonna select one here and then we have export selected animations. And that opens up the path that we wanna put this under. So I wanna put it under characters and then mannequins and then animations. And this is gonna be for Manny. Okay. And now we've got our animation in our Manny folder. Let's check it out. So Manny is good to go. And so at this point, if you're already used to using new animations, you're ready to go. That animation is fully mapped and you could just integrate it into whatever anim graph you need it. But if you've never done this before and you just wanna see how to test this out on your real character, that's exactly what we're going to do now. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta navigate into our animation blueprint. So for me, this is under content, core, and then your ABP third person character, but it might be called something else for you. And in order to do the simplest possible test of this, we need to add a node to our locomotion state machine. And so to get to that state machine, we gotta go to our anim graphs here on the left, and then we're gonna go into locomotion here. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna add a state. And I'm just gonna call this test. And so now we need to connect up our idle state to test. So from the edge, I can just drag out an arrow and I can also connect it back down here. And so these two arrows are gonna be the criteria by which our player goes from idle state into this test state, whatever that is. And so we need some sort of variable, some sort of driving factor to drive that. So on the left-hand side here under variables, I'm just gonna create a new variable called test animation, but you can call it whatever you want. It's gonna be a Boolean. And then for the arrow that's going to test, if I double click on that, then I can take our test animation, get, and I can connect that up. And then I'm gonna go back to locomotion up here and I'll go into the other arrow. And then if we're not testing, so get and then not and go all the way up, pick not Boolean here. So that's gonna be what transitions it back. So basically if test animation is true, it goes to test. And if test animation is false, it goes back to idle. Now what is test animation actually doing? So we gotta double click into this and we need to pull in our animations. So that's where we go back to characters. I put it under mannequins, animations, Manny, and I'm gonna take robot hip hop. I'll drag it in and we'll connect that right up. And you could set this to loop or not loop. It's entirely up to you. For dancing in this case, we're just gonna keep it looping. Compile and save. So now our setup on the anim graph and in our animation blueprint is done. We just need some sort of way to trigger this in order to test it. So if you navigate back to your content drawer, back to content, and you gotta go into your third person character blueprint. So I'm gonna go under core and this is where mine is. And I already have a test gameplay ability that we started two episodes ago with the number one. So instead of using keyboard one, I'm just gonna do keyboard two. So I'll right click on my event graph, search for keyboard, the number two. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I've already set up a reference to our animation blueprint. I can just drag that in here. And if you wanna see that, that's two episodes ago when we set up kind of the Statue of Liberty torchlight effect. But from that reference, I can get the test animation variable. And then I'll just hook that up to a branch node connect that up here. And so if test animation is true, very simple. We'll just turn it off. So we'll get anim BP reference, set test animation, and we'll set that to false. And then if it's false, I'll just copy the exact same thing. We'll set that to true. So simplest possible way to test. Here we go, the number two, compile, save. So let's give this a whirl. All right, moment of truth. Will our character dance? Two. Yep, and there we go. 
But I do see a problem here, right? His feet are kind of floating in midair, it seems. Yeah, even when they're all the way down on the ground, they're kind of floating in midair. You see that there? Two again, and he's back to normal. So that's pretty good. So what's causing that floating in air problem? So I'll show you what I found it to be. So under the animation blueprint, if we go back to our anim graph, so that's being controlled by this control rig here. And I found I needed to do two things to actually get this right. So the first thing was I needed to say our test animation, we don't want to do two bone IK if our test animation is activated. So I'm just going to drag out a pin here and say not, but scroll up to the top, choose this not Boolean. And basically both of these things need to be true. And both of them need to be true, not test animating and not is falling. And by the way, this is not going to last. So next episode, this is going to be turned into am I casting a spell. So whatever variable you're using to assess whether the player is doing something, that's what you would use here. And then this is connected up here. Now it's still not going to work in this case, because even in that case, the player's feet are going to float above. So what I found I needed to do is under control rig here. So the control rig is a really complicated way of controlling all our characters bones and movements joints, all that stuff but luckily it's just a very easy fix to fix this issue. So the Z offset L and R, I just needed to change these to negative seven. And all this does is when this is false, so we're passing in a variable should do IK trace. If that's false, it just sets the offset of our left and our right feet. And by making it negative seven, they'll no longer float above the ground. Compile and save. So let's test this out one more time. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to see our player's feet better. And that's something that we set up in episode five, which you can check out the mouse wheel zoom. And here we go. And by the way, this is not going to be entirely fixed. And I'll explain why. So two our dancing. Yep, our feet look good. And then our feet are all uh, out of proportion. So what's going on here. So in short, what's happening here is that if you have an animation where the entire body is moving relative to where those feet initially started moving, so relative to like right there. So it's not until the full body is moving off that the feet are kind of pulled in that general direction. So what's causing that again is this control rig node. And you'll find if you disconnect the control rig node, it just straight up works. And so what I would probably do is if you want to keep the IK trace most of the time, but you have an animation where the feet are moving, then you're going to need a variable for that specific kind of animation. And then if you go into the control rig here, so we already have a variable should do IK trace, but you could create another one even for your specific ability. And you can drag that in here, get and drag that out here to a branch node. And basically, if this is yes, then it's going to do all of this fun stuff. But if it's no, then it just does none of it. And so now when I compile and save now it's going to work just fine. So now just for the effect, let's light our human torch and away we go. So this is the exact process that we're going to follow for every single animation, every single gameplay ability we got coming up in this series. And for our next episode, we're going to start doing stuff with spellcasting. So if you want to proactively get all the animations we need for spellcasting, let's go ahead and do that right now. So back over in Mixamo, if we search for magic spell, so we have a bunch of packs here, magic spell pack, pro magic pack, light magic pack, the 56, I noticed this takes a while to load them all. So you could do that, but I'm just going to start with a 13. But basically, it's going to load a full pack of 13 animations. And we're probably going to use the vast majority of these over the course of the series. So we can just select download here, make sure for our pose, we say no character, get our keyframe reduction to uniform and download. And when you download those they are going to wind up in a zip file and we're just going to repeat the same exact process we did before. So I'll open up our magic spell pack here. I'll take all of these animations, including the standing idol, which I'll probably switch over to for our character. And then I'm going to go into our incoming FBX. I'll just select all those. I'll drag those all in and I can delete out now our robot hip hop dance. We took care of that. And so we go back to Mixmo converter. We open it up. Let's go back to step two: convert, convert. And it's going to take a little bit of time because it's doing it for about a dozen animations here. And when we see the green checkbox, we know we got it. So we can close out of this, exit out, go back to our outcoming FPX. And so for this, I'm going to go back into Unreal Engine. I'm just going to create a new content folder under characters, mannequins, animations, Manny, and we're going to create specifically a new folder from Mixamo. And that way I know where I got them. But we can't bring our animations directly into here because first they come in as UE4 animations, then we convert them. So let's go back to characters, mannequin UE4, animations. We'll bring them in right here. So we take our outgoing FPX stuff, select one, select the bottom, drag them all in. We got to do the same exact thing select our skeleton, UE4 mannequin skeleton. Make sure import bone tracks is checked. 
Use default sample rate is checked. Import meshes and bone hierarchy checked. Keep our import translation at negative 3z and import all. So now we got all of those. Now we can go back to our mannequin UE4 and rigs. And if we just open up Manny here, we now have all of them. And we can select all of these. The last one is the standing idle for UE4, export selected animations. And now we're going to go into characters, our mannequins, animations, Manny, Mixamo. And so now we got all of these. So if you got all these, you are ready to start building gameplay abilities, which we're getting into in earnest next episode. So I hope to see you there.